Hello there and welcome to my Arty Corner here on YouTube. My name's Angela, my business name is Artword and you can find me as either, either or both in various places around social media. I'm, amongst other things, I'm an artist, I love to draw and having been a science teacher for 28 years, there's still this desire to teach and to help and to encourage and to get people to believe they can in me and through drawing because I'm not good at adding colour and colouring things generally. I try, I do try, but using a pen and drawing pattern and shapes and texture is my superpower it seems. And hand lettering, I'm learning, I'm, I'm trying to find my way in hand lettering, trying to find what resonates with me. And before I go on to witter about that for a moment, can I just say thank you very much to everybody who subscribed. I appreciate each and every one of you so very much. Um, this went as a way for me to have to speak out what was going in my mind, going on in my mind, so I could hear my thoughts, because they just whiz through, not in words either. And with the thought that perhaps I could help one or two people, maybe. And it's grown to over 800 subscribers, so thank you very much. I think my next goal is a thousand, but I could do with a bit of help from each of you. If you could share or mention the channel, if you enjoy it, with other people around you who you think would, I'd appreciate that so much because I'm a Brit. I'm also an introvert, which means I'm not very good at blowing my own trumpet or promoting myself. I don't get it. It doesn't work in my head. I do my best but I'm not very good at it. So if you could, I'd appreciate it so much. Thank you for the thumbs up and for the comments. I know I've got a couple of comments to respond to today and I'll get to that. With no further ado, I've got this in front that I keep moving and shifting around. I finished it. I think I've finished it. I'm gonna pop it away in my sketchbook and leave it there. Um, I realized when I looked at this, when I was doing my social media yesterday, I think, or writing about it, I thought, darn it, I thought I'd created a capital I around the choose to shine. So it's like I choose to shine. And it looks more like a moat inside a wall with a castle in the middle, a very blocky castle, no turrets. I like turrets, I like towers. I'd like to live in a tower. A nice, warm, comforting, comfortable kind of tower. But I'd quite like that. Always have done, never managed it, only in my imagination. But I'm going, I'm wittering. And um, so I just thought, oh, why can't I see these things when I'm doing them? Because I just can't. So it is what it is. But I, I chose to do rather than um, tangle patterns, some abstract patterns around the outside. I can see there's touches of Latene or early Celtic art here and there, which comes out because I love that as well. But, you know, swooping, swooping curves and things like that and just see what happens. And these here, they've got a little bit of, we've got a bit of shine on this. Um, I filled the, these bits here with a metallic white and there is a hint of metallic gold, if I can get it, the light to pick it. Oh yeah, can you see? around these coin flower things that I've put here. I think I should have used a different color than blue around the outside of them. And perhaps I'll go back with gold later on, maybe. I'll, I'll see how I feel about that. But yeah, it's done. I think it's okay. I'm glad I used the blue line that I used, or the blue pen here to do the same lines. It ties it all together. And um, yeah, it's okay. Just wish I hadn't got them. all I can see is a castle in the moat. So, talking of castles, well, buildings, a little while back I started a series on whimsical houses. Now, I have got that in my sketchbook somewhere, but I dislike drawing on my sketchbook because it's so bulky and chunky. So, here's a piece of my um, distressing coloured paper here. So I'm just fertling around as I bash my table. Sorry if there's a wobble. For my pens and pencils and, and so on and so forth here. So I can do some drawing. 
because I thought it'd be fun to do some more whimsical houses because it's that kind of day. It's raining out to where I am in the valleys of South Wales. It's grey. It's actually really feeling quite cool and chilly almost. The computer tells me it's 12 degrees Celsius. I don't believe it, but I have my heated seat pad on behind my back. I said my back's a bit sore as well, and but it'll warm me through just nicely, just enough. Okay, so buildings. Let's have a look here. I was... Um, I, I thought of these because I was drawing tomorrow's colouring template this morning while I was up and waiting for um, my weekly Abel and Cole delivery. So that's now done. And I included some kinds of whimsical houses. So what I'm doing here is I've um, put the sides in and I've curved the bottom of it to give it this feeling that this might actually be rounded and I'll do the same kind of curve here. I suspect I most probably could have made that more curvy, but heck. I'm just going to extend those lines a little bit and then I'm going to add a couple of lines like that. Join them like this. And then a little bit extended either side here and here. And then I'm going to put a point roughly in the centre of this and vertically up, like so. And then I can connect these, like so. So I've got the basic shape of a towery house, a house that is kind of tower shaped. I'm going to pop a couple of lines down on either side. It's a bit wonky compared to the paper, but you know, if I wanted it perfectly vertical to go in my sketchbook, actually I'd use dot grid or quadrille gridded paper. I'm going to put a rounded arch there and I'm also going to put a rounded arch inside. So it looks kind of like there might be an entryway there. And I rather think above it, I'm just going to pop some stripes in like that just to add some interest and pattern okay i am going to draw another arch inside here and yeah i moved my paper on the side because i could see clearly where my pen was going to going to move so i've got that i've definitely got a very slopey tower and if we make this more like a door, I could just put it like a big church door that's got, you know, a big solid door, but I don't want that. I think I want it with a window perhaps in. Because it's whimsical, I'm not going to draw the frames in like that. And perhaps have a door knocker here. My most favourite door knocker in the world is in a little, it's a Romanesque one and it's in a little church. I think it's Dimmock. Oh, and it's amazing. It's like, it, there's, to hold the door knocker up here, there's this face that's got a big grin on and, and pointy teeth and uh, it's just absolutely amazing. It's just so mischievous looking and um it's, it's, it's been stolen many times over the years and it's now um, not on display on the church door, if I remember rightly. It's kept safely and securely, but it's absolutely wonderful. It's just so comical. Um, yeah, I know. I just absolutely love things like that. So I'm just putting some fluting on the roof like that. I could have put tiles on there, but I'm thinking I'm keeping it simple. And then up the side here, I think I may, because we're doing, well, this is me, isn't it? It's sort of like patterns and whatnot. So if I split that up into some squares, I could leave it just as squares, but it's a bit dull and uninteresting. So what could I pop in these? I could put well in there. I like well, but I think it, you know, something a bit different might be nice. 
So I'm going to put pointy arches in my little squares here. Like so. And I'm going to use a finer pen. I've got my O1 here. I've got an O3 out as well, but I think the O1 would be best. And I'm going to do an inner arch as well. This has gone from a simple whimsical house to something that's quite ornate. You can get as ornate or as fancy schmancy as you like because um, or keep it plain and simple as, as it was in the beginning. The choice is really yours. You know, I'm omitting, I may have gone a bit over the top here, but I like decoration and ornamentation. I've been looking a lot at Art Deco um, architecture. I absolutely love it. I'm in love with the, the so-called angels of Hoover Dam in America. I think they're guardians. Absolutely beautiful. And, and various other things, I think. Uh, it's very angular and very geometrical. I also like that, but I can't draw it. Not even with a ruler, because even with a ruler, my straight lines end up looking a bit on the wobbly side. So let's, let's give this um, some um, stuff around here. So I'm going to draw a tree. But to draw my tree, I'm essentially going to draw a very big leaf. I'm going to give it a, I was going to say stem, but we don't call them stems on trees, do we? It's trunks and branches. So there's its trunk. And then I'll draw in the centre bit as if we're doing a tree. And then I'm just going to split the sides up into some smaller sections that I can add various shades of green to. Gotta love trees that are simple to draw. So there we go. This will look, I, I suspect this will look a lot better once it's had, had some colour added to it or shadow, if that's what you prefer. But I quite like that. So let's just take this idea again. And perhaps I'm going to draw this a bit shallower, like so. We'll start with that. It's like the a rec, you know a rectangular piece of card is bending outwards, and then draw something on the top that looks like a very long thin sausage. And perhaps I'll do a thinner one on top, and then I may just. get a bit, have a look, roughly in the middle, up, put a point to the height of the, ch height of the church, height of the roof I want. And let's make this a bit of an onion dome kind of shape. I may not get it perfect, but it's hand drawn so, and whimsical, so it doesn't have to be perfect. So I'm going to put a little um, ball on the top there and perhaps I will put some sections in so I'm going to aura the outside and I'm going to put one down the middle there's a good reason for this because it's difficult to fit any more in and then I'm going to carry on ordering this and this is um, Aruka's which is a Zen tangle pattern and it creates a lovely woven kind of pattern here I'm sorry if you're going to get a bit seasick as I draw this Put 
I just think it'll be a nice way to fill this roof in with something a little bit different perhaps to usual. Now when the space gets a little bit too small, like here to put any of the outside auras in, I'm just going to sneak two of these in so I can continue weaving it down towards the bottom like so and like so and then I think I'll finish it like that. So that's got a nice series of, in fact if I'd carried it on um, I'd have had these coming down like pan tiles is it? Be quite nice. And I think around the edge here, start around the middle. And perhaps put just some little upside down arches. There's arches everywhere when you start looking for them. You can call them semicircles if you like, or arcs little rounded arches so that's quite cute and I think I will just pop that on just for a bit more ornateness if I drawn this in pencil I could have had the this just bulging out the side just a little bit but I think I might just thicken the lines a little bit here and there just to give it that kind of feeling and then we could put a door in or we could put some windows in. Let me have a look. So there's the top of my door. And let's give it the same shape-ish as the roof. That onion skin or onion dome kind of shape or a pointy leaf kind of shape. And I think I will with this one just put some proper doors in and then some wobbly broken lines as if they're made from wood perhaps there's a texture going on and then windows I think these would look nice with if I put my window there and there so I'm starting with the bottom I'm placing the windows and then I think these would look nice. I think I'll just do my rounded topped windows like that. And uh, let's pop a window pane in. And then I'll go back to my thicker pen and I'm just going to thicken the side that we'd see if we were looking towards these windows. And then the outer side, if we want this to be a window frame that sticks out from the house, we can do like that and perhaps underneath as well. Like that, so it looks like it's mounted. And we can do the same with the door. I'm going to make the outside on that side a thicker line and on this side darker, so starting to add shadow. Same here. To the left and bottom until we get to the other side halfway along and then we'll change it to the right and bottom. I think I might do the same with these so we've got that feeling that we've got layers and layers here. Oh I've changed my ruling there. It happens, I forget, especially when I'm talking. So if I go quiet when I'm trying to describe what I'm doing and my thought processes it's because I've got to focus on what I'm actually thinking so if I've done that on that one then I need to make the effort to do something similar here so I am going to put the shadow there for the inside of that arch and then the outside it gives me a chance to adjust the shape as well a little bit here and then this is the door, and I think I'd like the door set inwards just a little bit to protect it from the weather. Just that little bit. Then here we can have the thick underneath there, and the same underneath here. Sort of like trying to make it thinner towards the right. 
then at, on this side make that thicker as well so I did the same with the tree and then underneath perhaps I'll just put some something that looks a bit like cobbles. I'm never very good at this, it involves perspective. I suppose perspective only matters if you want it realistic. Whimsically, we can do what we like. So I think that's enough there. And then just scatter them as we get further away because that will save in drawing time. So that looks okay. Okay, um, let's pop some trees around here. I do like putting trees with houses. So I'm going to make these tall and thin, I think, rather than... I guess they're more like cypress trees than they are others now, aren't they? Just put the stem in and there we have just three trees there and perhaps I'll just give them a bit of a bit of ground and I will pop some again. I could, I am I could fill it with little puffy bits because cypress trees don't really have branches but I quite like this idea of these patterns inside them. I quite like the simplicity of that and the suggestion of branches here. So I'm going to do the same on these kind of. They don't all have to be identical. So I'll put a couple of extra stripes in in places. Here it's nice because it just helps to separate the two sides of the, or the two trees out. You've got one behind the other then. So that's quite nice. And I also think here I'm going to add some texture in here. Perhaps I'll pop. Some little shapes that look like little bricks. Don't have to fill it all in. The suggestion is enough for people to work out that this might actually be made of bricks rather than plastered on the outside. It's not essential, you can leave it plain. But you know, my my buildings. Okay. So how about something perhaps a bit taller. So for this one, I am going to draw my central line in, in pencil. Could use a ruler for this, but I'm just going to eyeball it. If I end up with a wobbly wonky building, I end up with a wobbly wonky building. So I'm going to have a bottom floor and then I'm going to have a narrower second floor and then a slightly narrower third floor, and I think I'll make that a short floor. I think I'll have a taller fourth floor. And then on the top, I think I'm going to have kind of my, um, onion dome, perhaps. Perhaps like that. But there are all kinds of things I can do with these, as we'll see. So if I start here, I'm going to put the separator in between the bottom floor and this floor before I even start, because it gives me the option now of drawing the bottom part in. 
So I'm just putting something that's a bit like a slopey roof on there. I'm going to add that. And then I'm going to draw what's underneath in. Just like that. And I think I will give that a flat bottom. Like so. I want a door on this. And I think I'm going to draw it in like part of part of a leaf, a half leaf shape. It's gothic y archy. I just heard what I said, gothic y archy. Sometimes I talk utter nonsense, I blather. Okay. I'm also going to use my pencil here to get my levels in. So that I I don't, you know, it doesn't matter if I have one square, one window lower than the other. But sometimes it's nice to at least, oh, look at that. That was a bit of serendipity. I didn't plan that. And um, one of the blue stencil bits fits nicely inside this window. That was not planned, honestly. I didn't even notice until I started drawing. So I've got these here. So that's quite nice. And I think what I might do on this one is I'm just putting some lines in here to separate this section. I could have put vertical lines in, but I wanted to curve them. And they've started out fairly straight here, but they're getting increasingly curvy to the side. And it gives that feeling of volume or shape that the, this part of the roof is curved. So I quite like that. Okie doke. So I'm going to put the next level in. I'm going to do the same thing where I'm going to start with the base of the, the level above it. And then I'm going to decide how I'm going to connect these together. And I think with this one, I may just connect them together like this. We're going to have a building that looks a bit like a weird chess piece. But I can live with that. And here I'm going to put the border there. I'm not making it like a um, oh, string course. Um, yeah, you know, like um, a section like this. I'm just putting it as if it's a pattern or, a, or it's painted on. And then I'm going to split this up like so. Black and white. And I think I'll split it like that so I can really get some black and white squares going on there. And then perhaps I'll pop a... Um, what do you call it? It's a window, Angela, in there. And I'm just going to pop those there. I'm thinking about adding colour and pattern and so on. Now again, with this one, I'm going to do the base of this, except I've made that base narrower than I wanted it. So I'm just going to extend the ends, and that means we get another stripey bit going on here. That'll do. And then here, instead of having it go straight down, I thought, well, we'll have one that's bended out. Bended out, bending out. And I will just pop that in there because I think it's quite nice to have something a bit different. So I'll put that there. It could be a door, it could be a window of a window if I do that. I think for these lower ones I may just do this and I'm just using my own one. Because it's easier to draw inside with a finer pen. Okay so now I've got this and what I'm going to do here is I want a twisty barley sugar cane kind of feeling to this tower. So I'm going to draw this in. I am stacking S shapes and the body of the main part of the S, the longer part of the S is going vertically up and we're not going to have a, um, what do you call it in this, a, a window I don't think. 
So let me just go like this. Oh, before I do anything, let's just get the base of the roof in. Like so. I do find these easier to draw from top to bottom because I can see how I can shape these lines to keep them I suppose in some kind of consistent form but it really doesn't matter but that's quite fun well you know why not in it so here I'm going to change the shape of my top just a bit and then I'm going to And that looks a bit on the twisty side now. And, and it's wonky, my tower's wonky, it bends to one side, but you know, it's a bit, you know, it is what it is. I also love Architecture by Hunter Vassar. And the, he has these most amazing columns and wonkiness and, you know, he, he adheres to this idea that not quite the nature of bores a straight line, but more that architecture should fit in with nature and natural forms and natural lines because you don't find many straight lines in nature you do in, in geology sort of you know think about basaltic columns and so on but nature mostly is isn't perfectly straight in any kind of way so that'll work that looks that looks that looks fine to me and of course it's whimsical so it doesn't have to be perfect But I quite like this barley sugar tower, I do have to say that. Barley sugar towers are fun. My next quandary is, shall I draw another building and not try to add colour? It's possible. It's very possible. <laughs> OK, let's get some shadow going on these windows as well. While I'm adding some line perhaps underneath the bottom lines I may very well just thicken as if there is some shadow and texture going on there now here it'd be quite nice to I might come back with a finer pen to do this um, add some weight to the bottom of those lines it will help to separate them almost a bit like we've got Go back and do that on the others where I've got doors. Um, if you make the line darker and thicker inside the door frame, it sets the door back as well, that little bit more. Just like that. And uh, I think this one might have a... I like that. There, that'll do. A bit messy there. Let's give some darkness on that side, that side and that side. That's fine. And in the centre of the S, I'm going to just add a bit of thickness there, just to feel almost like they're stacked one on top of the other. Perhaps. Okay, how's that doing? Oh, glass there. Right, here I want to come back with a finer pen. Because what I am going to do is I'm going to add almost like um, a triangle with curved sides to the ends of these. Because then it makes them feel like they're, they're individual separate pieces. And I'll do the same at the top. If I thought ahead or if I was feeling a bit adventurous or do this again, if I'd done it in pencil, I might come back and add, um, oh, I might have done this as overlapping tiles, but haven't. And I do want to add something here. So I think I'm going to add hearts underneath these because I can. 
Right, I've made a bit of a mess there. That's okay. Here I'm going to do my checkerboard while I think about it. I'd quite like a tower like that. It'd be interesting to live in, it'd be different. So that's fun. I almost want to put these in, in each section now here and have the barrier between them, but I'm not. I'm going to behave. And is there anywhere else that I need to pop something like that? No, not really. I think this is fine now. Um, okay, oh, trees. Yes, let's have some trees here. So for these, I'm going to have the trees growing on the ground. And perhaps a nice big one. Or bigger one on this side and I am setting them back as if they're behind behind and going further back so if I do that it looks like the land or the ground is moving away and I could put you know something like a hill or something here that looks like we are almost on the top of a hill perhaps with some it's a grass on which I could have drawn as I was drawing that. So that's quite fun. Okay, so I'm going to add some patterns to these. A bit different to the others, but fun. It's going to be add interesting adding colour to this because of the pink background, but I could have pink and purple trees. Because... It's my world of whimsy, so I can do pretty much as I want here. That's the other reason for drawing things that are whimsical and fun and not realistic, is it does give you that opportunity just to mess around with things. And I've just realised I've got... Two trees on each side, can't have that, so I'll pop one here, which is behind the building, like so. So there we are, we've got some whimsical, whimsicality going on here. I'm just going to move some stuff out the way, I'm having a look at the time, 38 minutes, because I don't want to go over an hour, I've got work to do as well. Um... Let me just clean and tidy that up. I have got a my eraser here, so hopefully these will have dried. Yet yeah, they've dried enough for me to tidy up the pencil there, which is fine. I shall pop that little bit of needle eraser actually on top of my Midori eraser sweeper upper sweeper upper. Right, I've got some water. I need a brush. I'm looking here for the size of brush I'm after. I don't want that one. Uh, where's my favourite brush? That one will, that one may do. Okie dokes. So ink tents got violet here so I'm going to start with dark at the bottom and some darker colour at the top I'm alternating the bands this way I can leave um, a bit of sparkle in the middle I think ink tents is great they'll they'll dry permanently and because I'm not using too much, they won't appear on top of my pen. The trick to this, to getting a 
a lighter area is to work just from the, the edge of the colour to begin with and then work back into the colour to get the, the intensity you want. So, and this will mix nicely with the Distress Ink. Having said that, it looks like there's a lot of Distress Ink on the paper, but there isn't really. So it doesn't really change the colour of something that's a bit more intense in colour, like the, like this violet. Obviously paler colours it would. So that's fun, I'm going to leave that dry. This here, that's why I could have put black and white checkerboard. I've got a deep violet, I don't want that. I'm going to go for complementary colours. That's a golden yellow, where's my favourite colour? There we go. I absolutely adore sienna gold. So I'm going to use sienna gold here. alternating it in those stripes. Darker underneath that overhang here from the roof. Just spread it down a bit and keep it nice and dark at the top. So that will give that, that feeling of shadow there. You can see it's still bright yellow. It hasn't really picked up any of the that colour. I'm also going to use this for the window panes as if there's light inside. I'm not trying to get a particular glow, I'm just adding some colour for effect really. And I also then think on the door knocker because I think this would be fine. It's a nice door knocker colour, nice golden door knocker. This, this area is so tiny I'm not going to try to use different colours, you know, to get any intensification going. The other thing you could, I'm doing is I'm using a damp brush now to just pick up a little bit more of the colour just to darken it at the top, as if the light source is low down and the, the, the room inside is perhaps a little bit darker there. So I'll leave that to try. Okay, I want a colour to go in between the purple. I could use this yellow. I'm very tempted to. In fact, I may very well, except it. I will find that jarring with this. So, with the the yellow underneath. So let me have a look. I could use a green. Actually, green aquamarine would be quite nice. I think. Excuse me. That's my stomach. If the microphone picked it up. I have eaten Abel and Cole delivery, so Dan um, cinnamon and raisin Danish. Oh yeah, have a pack of two, so I have one for breakfast today and one for breakfast tomorrow. It's my weekly treat. It's naughty, but then nice with fruit, plenty of fruit. I had banana and clementines this morning. Always try to have fruit with my breakfast. Don't always manage it, depends what I'm having, but today it was definitely a banana and clementine morning. Love fruit. I, I'm fussy about fruit, but what fruit I love, I love fruit. I need to do an order of um, some stuff from elsewhere. As much as I love produce from Abel and Cole, the organic produce, there's been a couple of occasions where I've ordered berries from there and they've come poorly packed and it irritates me. Um, in some ways, so I prefer to get them elsewhere. I think I might use a looking for a reddish orange here, a reddish orangey colour. Because I, well, not cherry, I'm looking for something that's not cherry again. Red oxide is too brown. 
a million might do it. For in between these, see I've messed up with the number of stripes here, but it's okay. I th yeah, this will be fine. This vermilion is particularly orangey, ready in colour. I just think that it will go nicely here. So I've sort of got my complementary colours going. So green and red are complementary colours. And purple and yellow or orange are. So they work. Yeah, that's looks quite fiery now. I, think I might need a bit more of the, the vermilion in those because it's washed out a bit. That's a bit better. Just a bit more. A bit more in that one. Yeah, that's that's quite nice. I like that. Okay, I've now got to decide what I'm going to do underneath here. So I've got that. I need to recover my green aqua aquamarine. So I know where that is. So I need another colour to go underneath here. And I am tempted to use, not sea blue. Where's my indigo? I've got a navy blue, deep blue. I can never find the colours I want when I want them. Iron blue, iron blue might work. So I'm going to pop this under here. It's my shadow. I'll activate that as a shadow more than anything else. And then I might use a different colour on the top of it. Or not. Depending on how I feel when I've done this. And I do want some to either side because I want the sides to be a little bit darker because they would be, they would have a bit more shadow on them because they're further away. So a little bit on the bottom as well. That'll do. I'll come back and look at that when it's dry. Okay, um, my door. I want pink. I don't want crimson. Is that a fuchsia? That's a fuchsia. Let's have a pink door. I'm going to put most of the colour towards the top here. And down the side in shadow and at the bottom, a little bit inside there, underneath the window, because they are the places that would be mostly in shadow. I'm just trying to keep the colour darkest in these areas. So my advice about starting in the light area and working outwards has just gone out the window here. Oops, just overspilled into the window frame a, bot, a bit. A bot. I think I need more tea. See if we can mostly get this this house finished before I do that before the hours up my hour limit forty eight minutes I know I know you must probably going it doesn't matter Angela but yes it does it does because I'd happily spend all day doing this and chatting away to myself and to you but I have. I have to get on with work as well today. I've got stuff I've got to do, so. So yellow there, and I might, oh, what colour shall I put round? Where's that aquamarine? Green aquamarine. I think I'll put this around the window. So I just think it'll work nicely with that pink, perhaps. Purple might have been better, but the green will be fine. It's a blue it's a more bluey green than a yellowy green. So it works nicely with purples and so on. So I just throw some in my window. Oh, luckily I have some tissue. And uh, let's have a look and see if I can pick some more of that up before it dries. Because once ink tense is dry 
its permanence. So let's pick some of this. There we go, that'll do nicely. That's just added that in. And I will then pick up some of the green, green aquamarine in the same kind of way to fill in the window frame again. And I think I'll use the violet. No, that's not violet. That's violet. For the door frame. Again, getting it quite dark towards the bottom. The bottom of the upper arch. And we'll just see how that goes. Once the colours have dried, I can always go back and add more ink work if I want, pen work. So I could add patterns on this. Gel pens, oh, way too much water there. A white gel pen to add highlights and little bits of texture. Quite nice, okay. Pick it into my arm. So let's just move that up. There we go, that's a bit better. I may possibly be fussing around way too much here. And the chances are I am, because I am a fusser. Well, that's the vermilion. Um, actually, I might pop the vermilion in side of these. The gold outside. And then a different colour around the outside. Let me have a look. I definitely want to do something about that iron blue I put. Here. It looks wrong. But it will have added that extra bit of shadow, which is what I wanted. So, So I think I might go back there now it's dry with, I think I'll use the purple because that blue will change the colour of the purple. From the top and will help to separate it so let's have a look. That really does give that deep shadow underneath there. Okay, that'll work nicely. Right, we've got those. I'm going to pop golden, yellowy colour around the edge. Like so. And then I can just, oh, okay, we're going to have water spillage out everywhere because I haven't, I've got water dripping down from the, my brush, but it's okay. That just means I've got enough to do the whole lot quite quickly. And if some of the yellow spills into the inside of the arches, I'm not going to worry about that. I'm not going to get stressed about it. It is what it is. That's all I'm going to say. Okay, these at the bottom, I think I might use... I'll put the iron blue away. I'm trying to think what colour cobblestones would I like. I think some, I think using some of these colours would be quite nice to tie it in with the house. So this is the crimson colour. And I'm just going to pick up some water. Try and keep it dark where I've put it on. Because that's where the shadows would be, but just fill it in like so. And perhaps just a bit more in one of these somewhere. So perhaps there and perhaps there, perhaps that one. So we'll have a bit there, there and there. That'd be all right. So those look okay. Add some the golden ones in. And I'll scatter some purple or the aquamarine in there as well. So it all ties together. What do 
you can't get pep cobbles these colours. Do I care? This is my world. I can have any colour I like. And I will. That's overspilled a bit there because I've used too much water, but it's okay. So this is fuchsia, so I'm going to add a, a fuchsia one or two. Because, oh, two actually. Because I like fuchsia. I've got purple here, so I'm going to pop some purple in. Which will look darn interesting against some of these colours, it has to be said. So we'll use some of it but it'll tie in nicely with the, the house and everything, so it'll look good. It'll look like they belong together. And then I've got my green aquamarine here, which is what I used on the roof. So I can just get a couple of those in. And that'll be lovely. Not that the house is sort of like collapsing or anything, it's just that it's... It is what it is. It's made of these colours. So I'm going to use green aquamarine on these sections here. So it's about putting a little bit at the top of each of these arches. To the other side. Like so. Damp brush, not sopping wet. Although this has got a bit more liquid in it than I wanted, but it'll be fine. Just want to fill these with some colour. And then that ties in with the roof as well then. So I've used this I've used just five colours here for this. Oops, I've got water there. It's not good. Right, and the last thing I'm going to do is this tree. I am going to give it a golden stem, I think. Stem. Trunk. It's called a trunk. Oh, dear goodness. I don't know. Do that. And then I may just get... I can because I haven't got any I've got purple up here but not down here so if I'm careful about where I add purple like so these areas are a bit bigger so I'm going to get a slightly bigger brush that one will do nicely then So they're both size twos, believe it or not. But this one's got longer hairs on it. They're synthetic, they're not they're not natural. I don't don't want to use animal fur. Um, not when you can use synthetics that well somebody who's in, as incompetent with all of this as I am, relatively speaking. I don't think it makes much difference what I do use. There are a couple, though, of sable hairbrushes, sable hairbrushes, sable brushes in my collection, and I'm puzzled how I managed to buy them. I must have bought them completely by mistake. It happens. For me, if I'm overly stressed, I just can't focus. My focus may have been on the size of brush I wanted rather than anything else, which is a bit of a pain. Right, I can. I'm going to get some of this green in here because I can. Especially on this side. This side here, I'm not, not so much, not there. Here I can get some in, I think, and here. But I guess it doesn't matter too much, does it? I don't want it, I really want to keep it separate from the green on the house, if I can. So let's have a look at these and see how we can get these two fill in. 
thinking I should have made the outside edges that little bit darker of the tree as well because they if it's curved they're further away so I would have wanted those to be a little bit on the darker side but it is what it is for now and we'll work it through so that's nice I like that and perhaps I'll add some fuchsia to the bits that I haven't added any colour to because the fuchsia could be just a bit of fun here because who says I can't have trees like this it's my world I'll do as I want it's a place where everybody has everything they need to live a good life an interesting life a life full of joy and happiness and good memories and to be educated and have the health looked after and everything else, you know. No conflicts. People have learned how to discuss things openly and speak about things, you know. My inner world. I am a child of the age of hippies. <laughs> it's a bit young to be a hippie, but, you know, what can I say? But if a song was ever written for me, it would have been imagined by John Lennon. I am a dreamer and I make no excuses for that whatsoever. But there we go. That is my little house. The only other thing I want, find my other pencil case. So I put together a smaller pencil case to take downstairs with me. Always a good thing. So I've got a smaller pencil case for popping in my bag with a smaller sketchbook if I do go out anywhere. I keep planning to go out, but I never do much. So what I'm going to do is I am going to add some little white dots where I think there'd be perhaps an extra bit of glint of light on the roof around the door arch, perhaps on my little door knocker, like so. Um, don't know about my, perhaps I'll have it all the way down the door, as if the door is, it's got a curve, the frame is curved rather than flat. That would work, wouldn't it? It would, I think so. And then anywhere else. Perhaps I'll just pop a little bit in some of the sections of the trees because I can and then in the sky and around. Not that you can see that. Desperate to do those white now. But there we go. So a trio of whimsical houses, one of which is coloured, the other two aren't. But, you know, I kept two five colours there. I know I used iron blue, but I, I went back with, with the violet. So count that as a bit of shadowing. Um, my tree looks a bit odd because I got more fuchsia on one side than the other, but hey ho, I don't always, this is why I don't colour things often, unless it's very simple. So I hope you've enjoyed this. I hope it gives you some ideas. I am just over the hour, but I really do hope it gives you some ideas for whimsical houses and that you'll have fun drawing your own and building them up to be a bit bigger than my first batch, which is, where are they? They're in here, I'm sure. They're bound to be in here somewhere. Just flicking through my sketchbook. Have I got them in here? I do hope I have, otherwise there's somewhere and I don't know where that somewhere is. I think there's somewhere and I don't know where that somewhere is. Oh, darn it. So, yeah. They'll turn up. They're going to be in some paper somewhere. But I did do some a couple of weeks ago. So, but these are more ornate and different. So I hope you've enjoyed that. So until I see you again, if you've enjoyed the video, give a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed, please consider doing so. It's completely free. And I look forward to seeing you in my next video. So until then, take care and I'll say bye. Hoyle. Oh, and be creative. Ta-ra.